Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, I want to talk about something that's a little bit more controversial. I'm going to talk to you guys about the second anointing and the sealing power. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, the reason why I'm discussing this, I, I know it's a bit taboo in some Latter-day Saints circles, and I also know that it's non-existent in others. So, so why am I bringing this up? Well, this week in social media, I have had encounters in several different social media platforms with people claiming that the Brighamite leaders are are sinning, and I, I don't want to get into this that part of it too much, but if, if you're unaware, um, they apparently got in trouble for uh, something about how they have like hundreds of billions of dollars that they weren't paying taxes on properly or something like that. I don't know. But the idea that's being said now is that they feel that they can sin. They can lie to the public. They can do these bad things. And it's okay because they've received the second anointing. And so I want to go over a couple things here. One is what, what we understand, a little bit about what we understand about Joseph Smith's teachings on this topic. Two is what the Brighamites teach or have taught in the past, at least, on this topic. And then third, I'm going to talk a little bit about the fellowship's view of these topics. So the first thing that I want to bring up here is in section 31 of the Brighamite Doctrine and Covenants, it says, in, starting in verse 1, in the celestial glory there are three heavens or degrees. And in order to obtain the highest, a man must enter into this order of the priesthood, meaning the new and everlasting covenant of marriage. And if he does not, he cannot obtain it. And so I know that, that part of the idea here is, I don't think they believe this now, but for a long time, including when I was a kid, that meant polygamy. But I want you to see something. Do you notice that part of that is in brackets? The part in brackets is the part that says, meaning the new and everlasting covenant of marriage. Well, that's interesting. Why is that in brackets? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it's not in the original. So let's go to the original. In the Fellowship of Christ, we have a book called Doctrines of the Saints where we took just a plethora of revelation from, from the Restoration of Joseph Smith all the way through to today. Um, so it's it's pretty massive. But certain things that were canonized as Scripture, like Section 131 for the Brighamites, they weren't revelations. And so we just went and took the original versions, which in this case was from William Clayton's diary, and we put it into a a section of the book called Epistles of the Saints. And they're not all letters, it's just that they're basically writings. So in here, from this, this journal entry, and this would be, if you're looking actually in Epistles of the Saints, it would be 7 Joseph chapter 1. It says, President Joseph Smith Jr. said, except a husband or wife, and, and I would add husband and husband, wife and wife, etc., enter into an everlasting covenant and be married for eternity while in this probation by the power and authority of the Holy Ghost. Priesthood. They will cease to increase when they die. Now, there's a, there's a couple things here. One is, it makes it very clear to me that in order to continue our growth in grace, we can't do it alone. We need, we need a buddy. We need a partner. We need a spouse. And so that's why I say husband and wife, husband and husband, wife or wife, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because he's basically just saying we're not going to do we're not we're not in this alone. And then it says those who are married by the power and authority of the priesthood in this life and continue without committing the sin against the Holy Ghost will continue to increase and have children in the celestial glory. Now there's a couple of issues here. One is we don't know what increase is and we don't know what children are. We can easily assume the increase is the Brighamite idea of eternal progression, where you just keep progressing and progressing and progressing. Um, but that's confirmation bias. We're saying that because that's what we've been taught, so we don't really know. And this idea of having children, well, in the Book of Remembrance, it talks about the idea of, of Adam and Eve's children being the people they convert. So what does it mean to have children in celestial glory? I, I don't know that it actually means we're going to have babies. I don't know how that's going to work. Any idea of what this means is an assumption. Number one, number two, this isn't the revelation. So this could also just be Joseph Smith's private thoughts that he's sharing with this group, and they may not be correct, which is another reason why they're in the epistles of the saints and not the doctrines of the saints. 
Now, it says here that the unpardonable sin that will break this sealing of the Holy Spirit of promise is to shed innocent blood or be accessory thereto. That's interesting. Now, here that, that will break it. However, it's not a get out of jail free card because it says all other sins will be visited with the judgment in the flesh and the spirit being delivered to the buffetings of Satan until the day of the Lord Jesus. That's important. All other sins other than murder are being accessory to murder. Thou shalt not kill. You're still going to go to hell you're still going to be visited by this judgment in the flesh and the spirit until the day of the Lord Jesus. So when we read DNC 76, if you're a Brighamite, you can say, well, hey, that's why we're sealing everybody together. As long as we're all sealed, no one goes to hell, but they'll suffer through hell. And I want to be clear here, that includes anyone who's had their second anointing in the Brighamite church. If, if you believe that, that that's what the second anointing is. Now, I want to read to you what it actually says in this, this journal entry that would be 131, 1 through 3 and 4. Or, sorry, 1 through 4. He also said that in the celestial glory was three heavens or degrees. I would say R, but that's okay. And in order to obtain the highest one must enter, it says a man, but I'm going to say one, must enter into this order of the priesthood, and if they do not, they cannot obtain it. They may enter They may enter into the other, but that is the end of their kingdom, and they cannot have increase. Now, again, to me, what this is saying is that we can't do this alone. We're supposed to work together. We're two or three gather in my name. There am I in the midst of them. That's what Jesus taught in the Bible, right? What does this have to do with the second anointing? Quite a bit. Let's start with the sealing power. Okay, let's go to uh, section one, the Doctrine and Covenants here. We're talking about the sealing power here in section one of pretty much every Doctrine and Covenants, including Doctrine of the Saints. It says, I say unto you that they who go forth bearing these tidings in the heavens, we're talking about missionary work here, the missionaries that are sent out, the elders of the church, to them is power given to seal both on the earth and in the heavens. Well, that's interesting. And it, it, it makes sense because I wasn't sealed by Joseph Smith. And if we look at section 132, it says, uh, this is section 17a, verse 15 for the Doctrine of the Saints, 132, 7b for uh, the Brighamite version of Doctrine and Covenants. And I have appointed to you my servant Joseph Smith Jr. to hold this power in the last days. And there is never but one on earth at the time who have the power of the keys of this priesthood conferred. Talking about this power of sealing. So how is it that this book, section 1, says that every 18-year-old elder ordained, every missionary that they send out has the sealing power? But then this says that only Joseph Smith has it. That doesn't make sense unless there's more than one ceiling power. And that's, that's what I believe. And I think that that's important to understand and believe because I don't believe that the Brighamite church has this, the ceiling power mentioned in their Doctrine and Covenants 132.7b. Why don't I believe this? Because Hiram Smith may have at one time had these keys. And I read that Joseph Smith, when he was running for president, may have wanted to step down from president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to run for president of the United States. And then Hiram would take his place. And so therefore, it makes sense that he would have the keys. But since Hiram and Joseph were both murdered at the same time, it doesn't really matter which one of them had the keys. But it doesn't matter because the keys were taken. So who got them? Maybe James Strang? He was ordained by an angel, but we don't know for sure. So that's a maybe. Uh, Sidney Rigney was not ordained by an angel. He merely had an angel tell him to become the guardian of the church. And the Brighamites are pretty clear that no angels came to any of them. I 
generally believe that if an angel had come, they definitely would have said so because they were really looking for that kind of stuff and couldn't find it. So if they don't have these keys, and this is where the ceiling becomes important. If they don't have these keys, are my wife and I sealed together? Yes, because section one says so, that every elder in their church has that power to seal the heavens and the earth. So therefore, Christine and I are sealed for all time and eternity by the power given to them through Peter, James, and John, to Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery, to every elder in every facet of the Latter-day Saint movement, right? So we don't need to worry about that. But we do need to know that Joseph Smith held these, these keys. That is important to understand because, I'm sorry, this is a bit of a word salad. We're going to jump right back over to uh, the William Clayton Journal in 131. Except a husband or wife, except these two people, two spouses, be married for all time and eternity, this, this isn't possible. So if we want to believe that the keys that are sealing people in marriage are the keys that grant the sealing into the heavens, then technically speaking, the way this is written, we could theorize that every Latter-day Saint that has been sealed to their spouse has that get out of jail free card, which is actually condemnation to hell because you're going to suffer for every sin and we all still aren't perfect. We're only perfected in Christ. But Christ's grace and atonement doesn't count for you until the day of the Lord Jesus, because we have to atone for our own sins. And that's why it's so important that we understand that Joseph Smith only had those keys to seal in salvation, because marriage was just a step in that direction and doesn't actually do the job. And we don't really need to worry about the Brighamites having a get-out-of-jail-free card because they don't have the keys for that either. So what is the second anointing? What's the point of it? Now, I will tell you that for Brighamites, it is this. They do believe that 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 you're being sealed. You are you have your calling election made sure you're definitely going to heaven and you're going to suffer hell for every sin. I remember there was a woman that I knew when I was a kid who had the second anointing, she and her husband. Her husband had died, and after he died, she started smoking. And she told me, every cigarette that I have, I have to suffer for in hell because Christ's atonement doesn't apply anymore. And yet, as she said, she couldn't quit. That sounds pretty horrible, if you ask me. So I I, I can't believe that, that our God is so weak that he cannot atone for our sins as we're growing in grace or that he's going to have us be sealed like this until we truly are perfect and aren't going to sin anymore. So who actually would get this? I don't know. This is all really, if you think this is a word salad, if you think this is a mess, you're right. This is so theoretical and Joseph Smith died before he could clear any of it up. And this isn't even a revelation. It's canonized as scripture to back up theologies that were being taught at that time, but we don't actually know that they're true. So the final part I want to say here is what we do with this in the fellowship. Now I want you to understand in the fellowship, first off, our our temple rituals aren't secret. We don't have a temple yet, so we're using home temples, but you know, when we do these things, anyone's invited to participate, well, not participate, but, you know, be there to watch, I should say. Um, there's some classes you take because we want to make sure you actually understand what you're doing before you actually go through. Uh, you know, I, I can't tell you people I talked to that went through the Brighamite. They took the class, they went to the Brighamite temple, and they came out traumatized because they had no idea what was going on. And that was a completely different church in there. So in the fellowship, they're all one church. You can come to one of our meetings. You can be ordained. You can go through the temple endowment sessions and you can bring your friends and family to all of it. We're going to be very open. We have manuals that explain exactly what you're going to go through word for word. Uh, and and we, we talk about this stuff. It's, it's sacred. It's not secret. And we also give it to people as they need it. Now, growing in the priesthood, if you're called a deacon or a teacher, then you're going to receive, you're obviously going to be ordained, you're going to receive your 
uh, washing and anointing. Uh, some call it initiatory, some call it curtain endowment. And you're going to receive the first endowment, right? And you get called as a priest or priestess, you're going to receive your second endowment. You get called as an elder, then you're going to receive the third, and you're going to be ordained, obviously, to the high priesthood. And if you become a high priest or high priestess, you're going to receive the fourth. And as a capstone, you're going to receive the second anointing. Now, I do want to clarify and say that if you are a deacon, for example, and you feel that you're always going to be a deacon, but you still want to receive the high priesthood, you still want to receive all these endowments and second anointing, you're welcome to do so. It's just that you're only called to be a deacon in the fellowship, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can be, you can hold the keys of the high priesthood and be a deacon or a teacher or a priest or priestess in, in the fellowship. That's just how, how it works. It's a bit more like a calling, I guess, if you will. But you still have to have the keys. Uh, and and you, you don't have to be ordained or endowed if you don't want to be, but we encourage it because those are signs and tokens and mudras and mantras that you will use in your priesthood. But none of it's tied to salvation. And if you're starting the spiritual journey as a minister, receiving your washing anointing here, then it just makes sense that at the end, you receive your capstone and you receive your second anointing as well. And it, it doesn't offer salvation. It's very clear in our scriptures that none of this stuff offers salvation or exaltation. We believe that works and grace go hand in hand. It's not works versus grace. It's not works or grace. And that they're perfectly tied to salvation and exaltation. It's not salvation or exaltation. It's, it's both. If you have the works, you have the grace. You have the salvation, you have the exaltation. And, and the other way around. They, they, it's it's the perfect harmony of the gospel of Jesus Christ because our God is all powerful. It's about your personal growth in Jesus Christ and how these things can help you on that journey. So what do we do with this? It's been a lot and it's been a mess. It's it's all theological. I think that's one of the reasons why the Brighamite Church, the Salt Lake City Church, I should say, not all the Brighamite Church is doing this, but the Salt Lake City Church is moving away from these ideas. They're moving away from these teachings because how do you explain this to people? And when you go back and do the research, it, it doesn't really make sense unless you're using confirmation bias. Now, I can tell you that, you know, well, I the fellowship does this and it's more like Joseph Smith's church, but the Brighamites are going to do the exact same thing. The reality is that Joseph Smith didn't give us enough data. And so we need more revelations on these topics and we're only going to receive them when we're actually needing them. And right now, as a fellowship, we, we're not large enough. We're not at a point to where we, we need that yet. So what's my Thursday thought? My Thursday thought for you is this. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Your salvation, your exaltation is in Jesus Christ. These things are interesting. These things can help you. But they're not going to protect people who are doing bad things. But what will is the atonement of Jesus Christ. And the way that you receive that is by giving your heart. And when I say your heart, I mean who you are to Jesus. You want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. You want to be more like Jesus Christ. That's how we move forward in Christ. So make Jesus your Thursday thought. Let Jesus be your focus because that's where salvation comes from. And I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.